Hey guys, it's Lydia here, and today I'm going to be reviewing and building this awesome laser by Orter on Amazon. It is such an amazing laser, and I can't wait to show you guys how it works. So, let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back. So, obviously I'm kind of spoiling the video a little bit, but I just want to show you guys that this is what the video is about. I'm super excited to show you this awesome laser. It is so strong, even for just being a 5.5 watt laser, it can cut wood and it is just a fantastic laser. So let's go right into the video. Um, I decided, as I mentioned a little bit later in the video, that I am not doing a, a full uh, build for you guys because I know for sure that there are better videos out there, uh, more detailed on how to build them. Um, so let's get right into the video and learn about this awesome laser. All right, so just checking out what is in the box. So this box is actually fairly small, so they really compact everything. Um, this is just the base plate and the belts for the machine. And then we have our screws and our zip ties and some test wood pieces that we can use to test the laser out. Then we have the USB cord that you connect the machine to the computer. And then this is actually the laser, and it's actually a pretty beefy laser. I have a 5.5 a watt laser. Um, and I believe it was like $130 and it is like half the size of this one. Uh, so you definitely know it's super strong. Then we have uh, our glasses, our safety glasses. And then finally our rails in here. Um, the X gantry is actually put together already. So I decided not to do a step-by-step -step, uh, video because I know for sure that there are better um, installation and building videos out there. Uh, so I thought I'd just show you guys the time lapse of me building mine. Now there is a free, uh, of course, a free manual on the Amazon site where you actually get your laser from. So you just go there and there's a PDF for you to look at. Now it took me actually probably twice as long as it normally would have if I would have read the instructions correctly the first time. Um, but other than that, the instructions were really easy. Just make sure you follow them step by step and which direction the Z-Rails are supposed to go in. And it's super easy to build. All you really have to do is put the base together and then again the Z or the X gantry is already put together for you. And then all you have to do is put your belts on it and you're basically ready to go. And of course, obviously install your laser. And there's only one um, motor that you have to install and that is the X motor and so there's technically only two motors because there's no Z motor uh, for the Z axis because that doesn't move up and down um, of course with a motor so as you see I'm just installing all the belts here and um, then the laser now I'll show you guys in a little bit uh, what how the laser works um, I had a little bit trouble of installing it correctly um, but I figured it out and then um, also the wiring on this machine is very clean and sleek so it's nothing bulky and there's not a lot of wires around so that also makes it a very clean and easy machine to use so next I'm just plugging it into my computer and connecting it to Lightburn which is you guys will uh, find out how to use that in a second um, and then I'm just making sure that the laser powers on and I have everything technically correct and I built it correctly. So now we'll go on to how to focus the laser. All right, so once everything is connected on the laser um, and everything is powered up and your um, laser is connected to your computer, all you have to do is open up Lightburn uh, software. It is free for a month. Um, then you can pay $40 for the entire software. It's really awesome, great software. Definitely invest in it. Um, now to connect to your laser, mine's already connected, but you want to go down here to um, uh, devices and then you're going to go to find my laser and you go through the steps um, just next and it will find your laser and once that pops up um, it is going to be a GRBL laser and once it is connected you'll be able to see it say ready here Let's see if I can zoom in for you right there it says ready um, and now I've just drawn a little circle down here to a, do a test cut. Um, so to first start, the settings I'm going to use right now is like two passes, um, 150 millimeters per minute, and then power at 65. And then we're going to send that over to the laser. But before we start engraving or cutting... Alright, so I actually disconnected the laser here because I wanted to show you guys one thing um, that's really unique about this laser and the setup for leveling or um, focusing your laser to your piece of material is there's this 
slidey thing on the back here and that is what you connect your base plate to and you usually connect it to the bottom um, holes here so it's as far as it can go uh, down. So all you do is connect that there. And then once you mount this on your machine, um, on it with these nuts here, um, what you do to prevent it from sliding is you tighten this little knob over here and it kind of like um, pinches it so now it doesn't move. So I'm going to install it once again and then show you guys how to actually um, focus your laser each time you use a different type of material. Alright, so once it is attached, now you can kind of see it's wobbly and that is because um, it is still able to move up and down because I mean, this isn't tightened all the way. And so let's say we want to um, engrave uh, or cut out a piece of wood, which you'll see later um, I show you how to cut it out. So this um, machine comes with this little cylinder here and this is what you use to focus your laser. So um, all you have to do is lift this up, put it down and let it sit on top of your, uh, on top of the main part of the laser. And then um, I would like to push it a little bit so it's flat and then tighten down this little bolt here. until it's really tight. So now that your laser is um, set, now we can plug this back in, turn the laser on, and then focus it to this point. So now I turn on my laser, and now I can focus it to this base here. And um, I really like to use a black or a dark card to get the best focus. And once it is focused there, now um, it will always be focused no matter what type of material you put on there. So say we wanted to actually engrave on this wood, all I'd have to do is loosen this and then put this object underneath it. Let it sit there, tighten it back on, take it out and now when I turn the laser on, it will be focused to that piece of wood. So this setup really lets you um, be very flexible with the type of material you use and it makes it super easy so you don't have to refocus every single time you put a different height material on there. Uh, and I really, really like that because it makes it super easy and this is, uh, you could just sit this somewhere on your machine um, and it just makes it really, really easy to uh, focus, I guess, your uh, laser each time you use a different uh, type of wood or material. Now I can go and test the cut. Always wear your glasses. All right, so that was on two passes, 65% power and at 150 millimeters per second. And as you can see, that is clearly already pushed through and that was at only 65% power. So this um, this machine is very, very powerful and uh, can definitely cut some stuff. So let's go for a faster speed. Let's go for 250 and try this again. And another thing is to remember when you are using a laser always make sure you have ventilation now as you can see this is an open room but i do have a bunch of fans in here um, and i will be trying to figure out a way to get ventilation better in this room um, but also never power your laser at 100 percent that will kill it super fast all right so that cut is done and as you can see it didn't cut through all the way because i did speed it up so if i did a couple more passes it would definitely go through and i can do that again um, now, if you want to specifically move your um, machine, I'm going to bring you over here to Lightburn, and all you have to do is go to the move button, and you can um, enter in a certain amount you want to move your machine, and then all you have to use do is use the buttons here, um, up and down. You can also home your machine and um, start in a specific corner, 
But you also, again, here is your fire button to turn your laser on. So if you wanted to move your laser to a specific spot, and I will move you guys back over here and show you that. So say I wanted to move the laser in a specific spot, I will keep the fire um, laser, I will keep the laser on and then I can move it, say five millimeters each. And now I can uh, tell the machine where I want to start my cut or my engrave. So uh, let's say I'll keep it there. I will do five passes at 250 millimeters per minute at 50% power and send that G code. And so now it is sending and now it is going to be cutting out the circle. So as you can see, that circle has actually popped out just like that. And this was only at 50% power, 250 millimeters per minute and five passes. And so that just tells you again how strong this laser is. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. And um, this is definitely be useful. So I also wanted to do another test with the wood that came with the machine. And this is very thin wood. It's actually thinner than this three millimeter I've been testing. So we can test this also. But I also want to mention to make sure you have some kind of uh, base below your machine while it cuts because as you can see it's cut into, um, into it already so you don't want to damage the surface below. So I'm going to do that positioning again and you can also move your um, piece of wood or your plastic whatever you're cutting and turn off the laser and then start it again but I'm going to do my logo here um, as an engraving and to do that in Lightburn all I did was brought in a picture image traced it and now I will be scaling it down a little bit and choosing up here fill so it will etch it or burn it and because you saw that this laser uh, is very strong I'm actually going to bump it up to 2,000 millimeters per minute with one pass and we are going to make it a little smaller and now we can test that. Just like that you can see how clean and nice this looks actually it's way better than I expected it to be um, and that was again at 200 2,000 millimeters per minute at 50% power so I could definitely bump it down probably um, to less of power if I really wanted to um, even just to make the machine last a lot longer or just speed it up um, and be faster so again, this is etching it, and I think that actually turned out really awesome. So I actually wanted to do one more test um, for this machine for cutting. And so I'm actually gonna move it to center it on that piece of wood that I have there. And I want to try and cut out a piece of a letter, or a larger letter. So I'm gonna do my best. As you can see, the laser is now on, and I'm gonna do my best to line it up in the corner changing the distance amount from 10 to 5 millimeters to now 2. So now it's set up in the corner where I want it. Now I can shut the laser off. I'm going to go back to my settings and change it to 200 millimeters per minute at 50% speed with 6 passes. I'm going to attempt that. And now um, before I actually do the official cut, I'm going to um, do a test really quickly with a square and that's what you always want to do before you do um, anything any um, official cut for your machine or for your project you always want to do a test so I'm just gonna move it over just a little bit and now I can start doing a rectangle test and the best thing that I like to do in Lightburn I'm going to show you guys is instead of 
um, down here where it says cut in layers, instead of having um, an absolute coordinates here, which thinks you um, start at your homing point every single time, I personally like to use current position so that you can just throw a piece of wood or acrylic or whatever you're cutting on your machine and then you can move it around like I just showed you. And if you have, if you do that and you have it set to absolute coordinates, it um, actually won't allow you to do that. It will go back to the zero, zero position because up here, as you can see, I have it set at 54 at the Y axis. So if you um, have it at, again, absolute coordinates, it won't allow you to do that. It will always go back to zero, zero. So, I personally like to use current position. It just is the best way for me. So after checking the cut here, it actually did not cut through. And then I'm gonna retest it again with a slower speed. So that was at 600 millimeters per minute, which is probably overkill. So I'm gonna go back to 200 with five passes at 50%. So again, I'm testing it just to make sure that it cuts through before we do a big E like this, which was attempted on a different laser which hopefully this laser can tackle it. All right, so after it is cut, you can actually see that it has fallen through to the other side. So that means that those settings work phenomenal. As you can see, it's such a clean cut. So now we're going to re-center uh, it over here and we're gonna use those same exact settings to cut. Now I'm gonna start to cut here and then we will leave it to cut. Now you can see how perfect this just cut. Now if you wanted a better look, um, I'd say uh, elevate your piece of wood and then do a reverse cut of this. So it would cut like this, for example. So then the bottom would actually be a clean look. But for me, the burn marks don't really matter. Uh, so again, this is just a phenomenal cut. And always remember to give your, um, machine a test cut like we did on there already and as you can see i've done a bunch of test cuts here before doing your final actual product so now i'm going to go through and do a bunch of different tests to see how low this percentage laser can go to still successfully cut a piece of wood so i'll let you guys know after doing all those tests all right guys welcome back so I have been playing with this laser for uh, probably a whole entire day now and because I've had past um, experience with other lasers, I am very familiar with this now even though it's only been a day. It is such a great laser and just an overall fantastic machine. I really, really like how it comes in uh, simple packaging where you just put a couple things together and then you have your awesome machine it, Again, it is very very lightweight machine and uh, basically you can put it anywhere as long as you make sure there's good ventilation and obviously uh, Safe surrounding area so nothing can catch on fire. So you're probably thinking There's not great ventilation in here and you're you are right But I have a lot of fans going and then I have the door for our shop open which does have a ventilation system but another great thing about this machine is it is very portable if you have a portable laptop that can go with it. So if I wanted to, I could bring this outside or in my garage or even just move it into the shop and use it in there with better ventilation. But this is such a great laser. Uh, like I mentioned a couple times in the video, I have a laser and I've also posted about it on my Instagram and Twitter. I have a 5.5 watt laser that I paid about $136 for just the laser so I could put it on my old 3D printer. And I've had a lot of ups and downs with that. I'm actually going to make a separate review for that laser and tell you my experience with it. But once you open this box and you use this laser, it is a phenomenal experience and it is such a big difference compared to that laser and just comparing the actual lasers in size, you can tell that this one definitely has a lot more strength to it. And uh, for testing that I've done with this laser, I've always had to test it with 100% power, which I do mention in the video, that is not good for your laser. And with this laser, with tests that I've done, I've only had to use about 50% of the power of the laser. So that will definitely extend the life of the laser. And that just makes it crazy how low of a percentage you can use. 
and still only have to do about five passes to cut some simply thin wood like this. As you can see, I cut these letters. Um, I've actually cut a bunch already and it is just crazy how well this machine works. And another quick thing I wanted to mention was when you are cutting a piece of wood, like I said, these pieces here that are uh, cut out of three millimeter plywood, you want to always make sure that your laser is uh, focus to the top of the wood. Now I used to focus it to the bottom, but with this laser, because of the high power it can uh, output, you don't need to focus it to the bottom because if you do that, then it really will never cut through the wood. It will just keep burning the top because of uh, how unfocused it is. So that is also why I really, really like um, that little piece of cylinder that comes with this machine so that you can make sure it is focused every time you put a piece of wood on there because again that's what I've had happen in the past I've tried to focus it to the bottom and when I would go cut with this machine it would just keep burning so always make sure your focus is at the top of your wood no matter if you're etching burning or just cutting out your wood always make sure it is focused to the top surface so it can always pass through in a sharp clean line and I did do some testing for speeds and um, uh, percentages of power. And what I've come down to was um, the machine will work at five passes with 50% power at 200 millimeters per minute speed. And it will also work at five passes, 50% power at 250 millimeters per speed. And keep in mind, this is for cutting wood. Just this simple craft wood, it's actually craft plywood. It was about $4 at Menards um, and it comes in a sheet of, I believe it was 12 inches by 24 inches so I can get a lot cut out of that piece of wood. Uh, now I also did do eight passes, 40% speed at 120 millimeters per minute. And I can't 100% remember if that cut through all the way. I don't think it did. I didn't get as a clean of a cut. And like I mentioned, I was gonna try go down to a lower speed uh, percentage of power and I did attempt 35% at five uh, passes which wasn't really reasonable because I did it at 150 millimeters per minute so in reality I should have known that wasn't gonna work because it wasn't enough passes so I again recommend 50% speed for this machine if you want to cut this thin plywood at five passes and 200 millimeters per minute. Now I know a lot of this is confusing, so I will leave it down below in the description, uh, my settings that I use. And again, the software I use is Lightburn, and that is such a fantastic uh, software to use. I've actually been using it since I've had a laser, even my simple 500 milliwatt laser that I had on my Tebow Tarantula in the beginning when I was just doing etching. Uh, so that is a great software. Now I know you can use Inkscape, but I prefer this Lightburn software because it just works great. And even though it is $40 after a month, you can actually extend your trial period about two weeks. So you get about a month and two weeks of free um, usage, and then you have to buy it for $40. But it's definitely worth your money if you're getting into uh, selling products that you use with this laser. Um, and then you guys know I did do a little bit of testing for etching, and this is actually the only test I've done so far during for this video. Uh, and again, the speed for that was 2,000 millimeters per minute, not 200, so it was pretty fast. And again, at 50% power, which is again my go-to power that I definitely recommend you keep low, so again, it lasts a lot longer with only one pass. And you guys saw me cut this. It didn't take long, probably about a minute, and uh, the overall outcome of it is just fantastic. So I know I keep rambling on, but I really just wanted to tell you guys how great this laser is. Um, there will actually be a discount for you guys, so I will leave that down below in the description uh, so you guys can get this machine for yourself. Now the total price might scare you away, but again, it is overall a very, very good machine and you can make a lot of money off of this machine. Um, so I believe the price for it is about a $400 for the 20 watt laser, and that is what I have. Now, it doesn't mean that it shoots out 20 watts for the laser. This laser actually is 5.5 watts, or 5 to 5.5 watts. There's also the 7 watt and the 15 watt, I believe, versions, and those 
uh, are cheaper than this one. But again, this is the best laser you can get, I believe, for the money with having this whole structure and it's very simple to build and the overall laser strength and quality is great. And also a huge shout out to the company's communications and customer service. They're so kind and I've actually been talking to one of their workers, Chris, and he's very, very helpful. And if you guys ever need anything um, to be fixed on your machine or you're having any problems, you can always email their company um, through the Amazon or just through their company email. Again, this was the Ortor laser and it is a fantastic laser. I 100% recommend it. Uh, if you're ever gonna buy a laser, definitely go for this machine. It's not a waste of money. It will last you long if you use it right. And it is overall an amazing machine that can get a lot of projects done pretty fast. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please, please don't be shy. And please let me know down below in the comments. I love to comment back to you guys, as you know. If you need any other details on this machine, definitely ask them and I will let you know. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.